Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. And now, here's Jeff Crilly. Welcome back to the Jeff Crilly Show. We've got our final segment. Curtis Mathis, who doesn't know that name? I mean, it's it's right up there with uh, Zenith as uh, among the most famous brands in the television world. But uh, they, they are no longer doing uh, TVs as their main source of income. My guests right now, Mike Chester and Joe Kupke uh, with Curtis Mathis. Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. Thank, Thank you. Jeff. Good to be here. Well, why don't we start with you, Mike? Uh, for for those uh, for the for the youngins, the ones that uh, that, that are, are are listening in their twenties, and maybe they they didn't grow up with a Curtis Mathis. Tell us the rich history of Curtis Mathis. The Curtis Mathis company started in 1899 making other products. They started in Athens, Texas, and they've always been a Texas company. The first television made was in um, 1959. Wow. And they've been building televisions and other consumer electronic products ever since. And they have a famous tagline. The most expensive television in America and darn well worth it. (laughs) That is a great tagline. It's a great line. It really is. But you mentioned earlier about the 20-year-olds that may not be familiar with it. Many 20-year-olds really are familiar with it because they've been watching television at grandma's house. Mm-hmm. And when they came home from school. And a lot of the Curtis Mathis TVs that were built in the late 50s and early 60s are still functional and are still operated out there. And many kids see them. Joe, let's bring you in on the conversation. What, so what happened um, in the 90s and into the 2000s to the television business and Curtis Mathis? Well, televisions, of course, uh, changed to flat screen TVs during that period. And we at Curtis Mathis introduced uh, flat screen TVs. Uh, the market really... Uh, has kind of hit, hit a point where it's a little bit saturated. Most most families have three, four flat screen TVs. There are new technologies around the corner, such as flat, such as uh, 3D TV. Right now, that's not very popular because of uh, having to wear glasses, not much content, and so forth. But there will be a new generation of televisions, and everybody will want to uh, buy televisions again, and we'll we'll continue to make televisions. But we have looked at other markets, and one of the most exciting ones. Uh, that we could find is LED lighting. We took an interest in that going back to about 2013. Turns out about 20% of our national electric bill goes to lighting. LED lighting is a technology that has matured to the point that it produces beautiful light, very long-lived products, uh, able to tune it to whatever the customer needs are. And it's really a revolution that the whole world is replacing its lighting with LED lighting and in the process saving 80 to 90 percent of the lighting bill. So it's really good for the planet as well. And we thought that was a major opportunity for the Curtis Mathis Company. So we introduced a line of really high quality lighting products uh, in late uh, 14 and uh, consumer uh, and business acceptance of the Curtis Mathis line of lighting products has just been outstanding. Wow. Sales are growing incredibly and we're very pleased with that. So we're expanding that line and uh, bringing better lighting to the world. That's uh, that's incredible. Uh, Mike, let's uh, bring you back. I, I think about, you know, uh, iconic brands like Blockbuster that didn't really understand the changing nature of video and um, even Kodak really didn't see the digital camera coming. I applaud you guys for recognizing that things were changing, but you were able to adjust and reinvent yourself. But that's also got to be scary, was it? Well, it really wasn't for us because we knew the technology. We were making LED televisions for many, many years and understood that there was a way to take that same technology and transfer that into a new product that was demanded in the marketplace. 2006, 2007 had an energy act in the United States that really made most uh, incandescent light bulbs unable to comply. So LED lighting was really the next easiest avenue to be able to achieve those standards and for consumers to purchase. So did you have, I'm trying to imagine almost the the company meeting where you're telling the employees for the first time, hey guys, we're going in a different direction. I mean, what was that like? Not good. No, it was kind of scary. Joe, I remember telling Joe the very first time, I said, we're going to go from televisions into uh, LED lighting. He just didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah he I, just... I remember that as well. Mike said, light bulbs. We're going to do light bulbs. I said, Mike, have you lost your mind? But <laughs> I became educated in what's going on with LED lighting nationally and around the world and became a huge fan. What was your light bulb moment? Oh, goodness. It was it actually it was when our uh, chief technology officer called me from Taiwan and said, how is television business in America? And I said, it's a little slow. He goes, no, it's dead. And he said, we're moving into LED lighting. 
Wow. So it was our technology people who really gave us the insight as to how to move forward. Well, in term, at the time that you made the transition, uh, was there kind of a, a dominant player in the, in the LED market? Not in the LED lighting market. Like with any new technology, whether it was with televisions or in LED lighting, you will get up to 100 brands that come out of the Far East, out of Asia, that take advantage of new technology. They come in with products that really aren't as good as they should be. They're not around very long. The warranties are not upheld. So we knew that we would be a lasting entity in that marketplace. We might not be the first one, but we will be there for the market going forward. Um, uh, Joe, how important is the the name and the brand of Curtis Mathis in terms of your success? Yeah, well, I, I believe it's very, very important. Uh, Mike just mentioned there are probably 100, I would go so far as to say hundreds, of companies making LED lighting. Customers don't really fully understand what that product is. You measure it in lumens, not in watts, and color temperature. There's a lot of different things. When you buy from a company you've never heard of, they may or may not be there in a few years. Curtis Mathis as a brand has always stood for quality, for innovation, and ultimately for value. And that's what we do in the lighting. It's very, very important to us at Curtis Mathis to make sure that we always live up to our heritage of quality, innovation, and value. And that's something that the consumers can can rely on with us. In terms of the distribution channels, the uh, I, I'm imagining that the retailers that sell your light bulbs are different than the retailers that w- w- sold your, your TV sets. A little bit different because you have more companies such as grocery stores, hardware stores, um, companies such as the big box stores that are really selling most of the LED lighting products. And before that, you had the major retailers selling our televisions. So it's a little bit different uh, distribution channel than we've had in the past, but we've had no problem in creating that uh, fulfillment for them, and they have a great demand from us for a quality product. Do you find that uh, I, I've, I've seen different stories on the news about just how competitive it is for shelf space and w- whether it's at eye level or the bottom shelf? Um, Joe, tell us how that game is played. Well, in fact, most of our uh, – that is very competitive for shelf space. Uh, General Electric owns the shelf space in many grocery stores uh, effectively. Uh, but actually, the world has changed. Technology has a big impact on everything. An awful lot of our sales, a large portion of our sales, are actually online through resellers, if I could mention. But 1000bulbs.com is probably the largest online lighting reseller. If customers want to see some Curtis Mathis bulbs, that's one place to see them. And that's competitive as well. But the brands that consumers like um, get priority spots. And uh, we're, we're very blessed to uh, have a good visibility on a lot of different sites. In terms of pricing, um, I, I suppose it's all over the map what you can pay for LED lights, is it? It really is. It, it's still uh, rather competitive, but there at the very beginning, you had very high prices for a basic 60-watt equivalent light bulb. People were paying $20, $22 or even higher at one point in time. Uh, about two years ago, a company called Cree came out and really broke that $10 price barrier to $9.97. We're now at $1.99 wow. on that light bulb. So it's come back. Price compression is dramatic. Um, a lot of brand compression is dramatic as well. So there's only going to be a few players standing at the very end. Price points are becoming aggressive where consumers can really go out and buy the light bulb now. What if you, uh, you know, the, the economy has just been slowly eking along. You know, we got some employment figures yesterday that kind of shocked to the downside. Um, so anytime you, you're talking to people who are experiencing explosive growth in, in revenue, it's it's really almost like a unicorn. Joe, how, how is it that you guys are achieving such great uh, uh, exponential success at a time when the country is just slowly growing? Well, I guess we've got a lucky combination of a few factors. Uh, In the first place, the dramatic savings that you achieve with LED and the dramatic uh, price reductions that have come, as Mike has has said, uh, those have just made this a very hot area. Consumers, actually, if if, uh, they're under stress a little on their own uh, family or corporate budget, uh, they actually save money buying our products. So it's kind of like if people used to say advertising doesn't cost, it pays. Uh, that's also true of LED lighting. And then, of course, uh, is the Curtis Mathis brand name. And when you have the uncertainty that people may feel when they don't fully understand a new product, they take comfort in knowing if they buy a brand like Curtis Mathis, they can rely on it. So b- 
between the brand, the energy savings, and, and the fact that it really does save money, uh, it's just a, a good space for Curtis Mathis to be in right now. Um, Mike, do you feel like if we were to go out on the street right now and poll consumers and say, what is Curtis Mathis? Would most of them say a TV company or would they say a light bulb company? Most of them would say a TV company. And I think that gives us a great foundation to be able to expand into LED lighting because there is a comfort factor and a faith in that brand where people can feel comfortable and they gravitate. And Joe was talking about new technology, new terminology. When people are now buying light bulbs based on lumens Mm -hmm. versus a 60 watts before, it's confusing. And people gravitate towards companies that they know and trust. And to help them navigate this new terminology and be able to make a good decision uh, to purchase a new product, Curtis Mathis does help that. Um, Joe, t- for the people who are listening, who are just you know they're they're aware of LED lighting, but they're still using the the old uh, fluorescence or uh, incandescence. W- incandescence. Um, give us an education. Now, why why are, is LED uh, way better than uh, well incandescence? We all all love Thomas Edison and thank him very much for a hundred plus years of wonderful <laughs> incandescent lighting. Uh, but it was time uh, to move on. It, that uh, technology just heats a wire uses a lot of electricity to do so until it glows. Uh, Compact fluorescence, the curly cube bulbs, they don't really come on fully when you turn them on. They have mercury in them, which isn't good for our planet. Mm -hmm. Uh, LEDs, on the other hand, are actually semiconductors, and uh, uh, they produce very pure light. It can be tuned to what's called color temperature as as well as uh, some other variables. And uh, you can really produce any kind of lighting, very controlled. But for corporations, for instance, you can also address that from a computer or a smartphone. And you can monitor your electricity usage, monitor what's going on with your lighting. You, you can talk to it and change it. Same thing with home applications. We'll be introducing some of those uh, in the coming year where you can uh, set moods in your home or, or make lights uh, come on and off when you're not home or even have bright white light when you're uh, reading the paper and then turn it down to a soft white uh, later on, which is something you just can't do with incandescence or fluorescence. Wow. So, so Mike, um, uh, it seems like LED lasts a lot longer than traditional bulbs, and it would almost be in your best interest to keep selling the same bulb to the customer over and over and over again. That probably affects your margins and, and I mean, your, your, how long do your bulbs last? Well, the government testing says if you burn our basic LED light bulb for three hours a day, it'll last 22.8 years. Oh, my goodness. Which seems like a long time. Now, our early investors in Curtis Mathis, when we expanded this, said, well, as soon as you sell everybody a light bulb, you're out of business. I said, well, that wasn't the... It wasn't what happened in televisions. We sold everybody a television, and then we got bigger TVs and better TVs. Same thing's going to happen in LED lighting. As Joe said, they're addressable. So the whole concept of being able to change the mood in your home, use less energy for the same amount of lighting, is going to help displace you know, the lighting that is the early adopters purchased in the, uh, at the beginning. And in terms of the environment, can, can when your light bulb... Uh burns out or 22 years from now when it burns out, can I throw it in the trash can or do, do I have to put it in a special? Uh... No, you actually can throw it in the trash can. There's no mercury or other har- harmful elements in our LED lighting. Uh, similarly, in the light that's emitted from them, there's no ultraviolet and things which will damage your fabrics and your furniture coverings. And uh, we're talking about the life. Uh, most of our products are warranted for 10 years, some of them for five years. So it is a very long term, and we think there are going to be many new applications for lighting because of the features that come with LED. And uh, we're very bullish on the future, even though our bulbs will last a very long time. So the future is bright? The future is bright. The future is (laughs) bright. Well, give us some some closing thoughts. We've got about a minute left uh, on the Jeff Curley Show. What uh, what are some things that you want people to know about um, uh, Curtis Mathis and, and where this is all going? Well, as we said earlier, Curtis Mathis is a brand that people can rely on. And I, I believe people become very confused when there are technology shifts in the marketplace, like there was in televisions, like there are in LED lighting, because there's new terminology. People now have to buy based on a new set of standards and, and new words, such as uh, from an LED light bulb or a lumen or a CCT. And they can trust brands such as Curtis Mathis, again, to help them navigate through that terminology 
and to make a educated decision with comfort. Well, this has been a fascinating segment. Thank you so much for uh, both of us being on the Jeff Curley Show. And the website is curtismathis.com. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.